What up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome to another episode of The Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. This is going to be a little split um, because I got so much stuff I want to cover today. Uh, and I've uh, been down with the flu and I'm feeling a little bit better. Enough to get on here with you guys. And uh, I let me do something real quick because I want to appreciate a couple people. Um, who um, donated to the channel. Give me a moment. Let's see if I can pull those names up. All right. All right, now, some of you donated by Super Chat. I won't get that information until the end of the month. But I do want to thank um, Mossad Mean, who donated 15 bucks. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'll get to that later. What up, what up, what up? How you doing, YouTube? How you doing, Facebook? How you doing, Twitter? This is Rob Brown with The Rob Report. We got a lot of stuff I want to cover. I've been a little bit under the weather. You know, you know all of us are under the weather. <laughs> <laughs> the weather is never under you. <laughs> you know, it's like saying the sun is finally coming out. The sun is always out. It's just blocked up by stars. I mean, by the clouds. Uh, but I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about. But first, I want to get into an issue. Um, a former company that I work for, Global Contact Services. That's right, GCS. A subcontractor with the Metro Transit Authority of New York City. and uh, A horrible horrible company now there's some people there's some company a little more horrible than gcs union of america is one of them uh, but this one is specifically for the workers there hi i'm robert brown you remember me i used to work there yeah you remember me they let me go because my train was delayed my train was delayed i never had a problem with latenesses never have a problem on this job a stellar worker all of a sudden we get some issues with the train and they want to let me go. Now, unfortunately the state of New York doesn't have anything that make companies comply with the issues concerning public transportation, but you need to work on that. I will work on that. Legislators need to work on that, that there need to be a little bit of grace period when those who, if you could prove that you were delayed by train, you, you'd be able to get a grace period. There's no excuse for any company to be able to have the leverage to say, I'm still going to let you go when your things are out of your control. And uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, have end up being fired from that particular company being one minute late, five minutes late. A lot of times people are fired because they take what we call paratransit, accessoride. These are the people who got disabilities people who have um, mental um, issues um, or whatever. Uh, and we provide transportation for them for the price that it costs to ride um, the public transportation. But if their own transportation is making them late, the Metro Transit vehicles are making them late, the job still fire them and they work at the same place. So here, here's the deal. Um, you know me, my thing with Union Power and what we do here is we try to marry the community with the worker to team up against the company. The workers need the community to back them up. The community need the workers to back up. You realize most of the great fights in the labor movement happen because of the marriage between the worker and the community. So what I'm saying is you don't have to work at a particular company to help a particular labor force at a company achieve their goal when it comes to workforce democracy. You don't have to do that. But you need to do it. Most of the great victories in labor history happened because the community backed up the worker. If you look at everything from the textile um, uh, manufacturing um, it fire that happened all the way to um, you know, the steel movement and you name it, 
it wasn't the workers who went out on their own to try to fight against the company. The whole community as a whole backed up the workers. And that's what need to happen in every fight. And that's the purpose of union matters and union power is my, my purpose. And I don't have, you know, you know, I read a scripture said despise not small beginnings. And those small beginnings can become, can lead to big achievements. <clears throat> and this small beginning, as a person who is in love with the labor movement, movement, as a person who work in the labor movement, as a person who organize in the labor movement, it is essential that the community back up its workers because the workers are people from the community. Now, sure, corporate leadership, they have their own community and it's normally not yours. It's usually the gated community in a elaborate rich section with, <laughs> with cops protecting them everywhere they go. And if they find somebody like me walking in that neighborhood with a hood on, guess what's going to happen to me? You know, Mayor um, DeBaggio did say it, and he said it correctly. He ain't doing nothing about it. But there's a tale of two cities, the wealthy and the um, not wealthy. And the wealthy oftentimes is trying to press down the not wealthy. And they, they can't do that unless you allow them to do that because it's more you than them. This message is for everybody at GCS. You're going into negotiations this month for a brand new contract. Unfortunately, I'm not there. I was at the first contract. We always always remember a lot of people say the contract wasn't that strong. Two things about getting the contract done. The first one isn't going to be the contract that you always want. If you always go through the history of TWU, Map Store, you name it, the different departments in um, TWU, the different departments at 32BJ, SEIU, security and all that, they never got what they needed on the first contract. The first contract is the first blow. You got to bargain. And when you mean bargaining, there's going to be a little give and take. It's not going to be my way or the highway. But the key to winning is who have the leverage, the pressure to get you to get your way. Who is going to have the most leverage in negotiations? Will it be GCS and their fear game? Or will it be the workers coming together as one, having a mentality of no weak link, either you with us or for us. And I'm telling you, literally, you're going to have to get in people's faces like that, GCS workers, and get in and say, look, either you with us or you with them. Because when it comes to labor movement, that's the bottom line. There is no sidelines. Y'all go do it. The union, no, you, and we always say it, the union is a collective of workers coming together as one to labor for more for them and their family. That's what the union is. Give me a moment. Take these off. So I'm sending this message to every worker at GCS. I would love to be on that campaign, but I'm not at TWU and I'm not at GCS. Now, you can lobby to suggest that I help organize the workers do, um, at GCS um, during the day. But I'll tell you, I can't do it for free. <laughs> Brother got bills. You know, so I, I, you know, but I would love to just stick it to them. Look, either way, I'm going to be in GCS's face. And it ain't nothing personal, uh, Mr. Alcorn. It's just business, right? It's not personal to fire somebody for being late one minute. It's not personal to fire somebody when their mother die and they have to go tend to their mother and you're going to fire them anyway. That's not personal. It's not personal when you stand in negotiation and say, look, if my child end up have, um, passing out on the floor while I'm getting them ready for school and I got to take them to the hospital, you still going to write me up and possibly fire me even though I got a valid excuse? You guys will say, yeah, but you'll try to say it's not personal. And I'm telling everybody on this, at this workforce, all 600 of you, you need to make this personal. You got to make it personal because if you really want a stellar second contract, you guys got to come gorilla style. You can't be playing around. We can't have no punks punking out. Don't want to sign this. Don't want to show up for this. Don't want to show up for that. But expect the union to do all the work and not understanding each person that decided to make a decision to step out and do something is the union. No weak links. No punks. 
no cowards. And let me tell you something, GCS is gonna come with this fear game. They're gonna threaten to fire you, threaten to fire. And guess who is the main person that's not that's gonna get fired? The person who do not position themselves with the union. The person who do not position themselves on the side of fellow workers on the job. You realize one of the things that could cause your you, you know, they GCS is a fire machine anyway. They don't want to keep people long term. And the thought of people retiring to GCS is unheard of. You retiring at GCS? GCS, lucky they got another seven year contract. Wanted 10, but end up getting seven. So they still temporarily. And I know seven years is a long time. Right now, it is a long time. That's why in this contract negotiation, you guys got to come with it, man. You got to come strong. <clears throat> and I'm going to do whatever I can to help because I love you. And I want to see, I, I love working people and I want to see working people get what they deserve. Nobody, nobody in America should have to work over 40 hours to get everything that they want. They should be able to get everything they need, the basic needs for their family, working 40 hours. You should be able to have decent health care, decent education for your children, a decent home, H-O-M-E, a home, not apartment, but a home, transportation, vacation, the basics, all for one freaking job. You should be able to work and your spouse be able to take home, stay home and do whatever they want to do. But it's not that way, and it'll never be that way when we got to deal with these BS companies. Companies don't give a crap about you. All they care about is their bottom line. Give me a moment. Now, you got a wonderful team there, GCS. Ms. Lennon is awesome. Mom is awesome. You got a wonderful team on the site. Judy is awesome. Her team is awesome. Got a chance to meet the young lady that's the attorney uh, with this campaign. I heard she, she is awesome too. I don't know. I don't know her. But you know who's awesome? You are. And let me tell you something. This can be a quick and easy fight if everybody come in the majority. The majority of the workers need to be on the side of the workers. Don't be kissing up trying to get no management job because the bottom line, as soon as you become manager, it ain't going to be too long they get rid of your behind. Check the track record of all the people that's in management right now. Either they quit, they got fired. You got one person was out here when the last time we had a contract going on, she was out there with a t-shirt telling people to vote no, no against the union. She got fired for being drunk on the, um, coming to work drunk. And right, right, you shouldn't be coming to work drunk. But they didn't give her, I heard they didn't even give her an opportunity to go get some help. And when they got you on the ropes, they're going to try to knock you out. They're not going to give you a free pass. So what you got to do is rally together to create your own free pass in a contract. Whatever you need the most, of course, the leadership is there is going to talk to you about this. But whatever the things that you desire, I mean, just put it out there and you go for it. I mean, to me personally, nobody in New York should be making less than $20 an hour. Nobody. Because the rent is too doggone high. Everybody should be making $20 an hour. Everybody in the labor movement should be pushing for this 10 PTO days that the city is pushing. I was at the meeting. I was at the announcement of the PTO days and there was nobody from GCS or any other company out there. The only organization out there was maybe the um, nurses, uh, 32BJ, but I didn't see anybody from TWU, unfortunately. I'm not, it's not a shot at TWU, but you know, whenever we got these legis legislators are trying to push things that's going to help you as a worker, your butt got to be out there. And yes, sometimes you might have to call out to be there. Take a sick day or just call out. It's all, if you got, if you got, sometimes you got to take a help. <clears throat> the city is pushing 10 PTO days, separate from vacation days, separate from sick time. They need your help. Unions should come together and work together, not separate. Departments should not be separate
They all should come together to help each other out. One thing I really like about 32 BJ is um, whenever the security people are in negotiations and they need to put the pressure on the owners of the um, companies that they work for, every department, house cleaning, security, flight, airlines, transportation, you name it. They all come out there and be and they're ready to strike. They all come out there and rally. They come together as one as a collective, the entire union coming out on behalf of these person, these people who are trying to get a contract done. You probably seen the videos that I had when I was in Philly and we all came out in Philly in support of the, um, uh, um, commercial workers there in Philly, all the way from New York City. Now, I'm quite sure, knowing the heart of TWU, they're willing to rally the whole entire TWU behind you. But you got to prove to yourself that you're worth everybody stopping what they doing to cater to you. Now, I'm going to just briefly go over some things that I would do. I'm not in charge, but I would do it. You know, first of all, I need to know who's on board. So me personally, I will, I, I will have a card signed with a platform on it. I don't know. I had a card with Bernie Sanders' platform for running for president. Uh, and usually on the platform, these are the things that we're going to fight together for to make your lives better. So me personally, I will come up with that card and say, these are the things that we're gonna fight for to make things better. If you have any suggestions, just like they do on these campaign websites, you put down some suggestions. And if there are people in the majority asking for the same thing, we'll add them to this platform or what you can call a manifesto, a people's manifesto. We want $20 an hour. We want a couple more holiday holidays. We want the union to control scheduling. We want vacation approved within seven days. If we got to get it in within seven days, we want it approved within seven days. <clears throat> See, you got to make the demand and then you got to apply the pressure on them so they can concede to the demand. But without that in majority, GCS laughs. And see, GCS never really had a fight. This is the first, the last fight they had was the first time they had to encounter a, a union fight. And they really haven't been hit upside the head. It came close. You realize what three days would have did to the city of New York and the pressure that GCS would have had on their head concerning this? So we need my suggestion. I don't work there, but I will have a I will have a platform, a party platform, a, a, a campaign platform for a new contract. These are what the workers want in general. You got to let people know. I'm quite sure they're going to have the survey because that's how we do it of the um, needs that you are more concerned about. Healthcare, blah, blah, blah. And then we go through healthcare. Then we go through each one. Which one you want in particular? You think you deserve $20 an hour? Do you turn? Because we got to start somewhere and negotiate up or down from there. All right. Keep it at the middle. So I will have a platform. Once I got the platform completed, I will, I will demand that everybody sign the platform. Why? Because I need evidence that you're participating in this fight. Why? Because they're going to be coming for your head. They're going to be trying to fire you and, and, and they're going to be scaring you. And some of y'all are going to tuck your head in your shell like a little turtle because you don't want them to see you fighting them. And I'm telling you, the more you out front fighting them, the more they're going to be more scared of you. But the thing is, you got to get a bunch of y'all out front fighting and not leave your partners hanging exposed alone you can't fire all y'all and to systematically fire a bunch of y'all at one time will alert the national labor relation board and then they will get in big trouble so platform voting on voting on what they call um uh 
our union contract platform, and then you're going to come out with a policy platform in a, um, a, a sheet form. <clears throat> Everybody read it. They sign it. You give a copy to them. On the back of the platform is the social media contacts. And in the social media contact, we're going to use, I will use Facebook, YouTube, and um, Twitter to do instant communication with the people who are on board with this labor fight. That's what I do. Now I got you on document saying you're willing to fight for this. Now I'm going to, you know, if I need to, I could put it in your face. I thought you wanted to fight for this. You, you want to stay the same way? You want these people to continue to abuse you and treat you like trash? Or do you want to fight for this? You got to be held accountable. That's what a contract is. And that's what a covenant is. It's, it is to remind you that you're a part of this fight. So I'll have that. And I'll be able to look up and say, hey, Jimbo, Jimbo said that he wants a raise. So what's up, Jimbo? Why your butt wasn't out? Why? You think they just going to give this to you? You got to fight for this, man. You need to be out there and, and, and help apply the pressure. It's not my job. It's our job. It's our job. I shouldn't be out here fighting just for, you know, I'm out here fighting for you and your family. You should be ashamed of yourself not to be out there fighting for your family. Sometimes you got to be that way when it comes to things like this. Another thing I will have, again, is the instant communication. If Miss Lennon need to uh, contact you, she can do it through uh, a group chat. She can do it through um, various forms of social media, and I'll talk to her about that, and I'll make myself available to help her with that because that's what I do, a little social media campaigning. Um, another thing in there, one of the things that I would suggest is I would suggest the union take over scheduling, the entire scheduling department. Because right now, GCS is using the entire scheduling department to fire people. So I'll remove everybody and let the union run that. The union run the scheduling. The union run the overtime. The union run the vacation approval. The union run everything. But you got to fight for that. Some of you people didn't even get a chance to go on vacation. They wait forever to approve your stuff. And them jack legs in the department. They don't like me and they're probably glad I'm gone, but I was always on them. I'm like, yo, this is not fair. I'm, I'm going to report your butt because I need to go on vacation. You taking forever to approve my vacation. And I know you going through the same thing. So you should be wanting the union to take over that department. And unions do take over that department. Unions should be holding out, giving out overtime. It should not be up to anybody in those, any department, any general manager trying to make a decision over the union. There's a lot of people on the 7th and 8th floor that you need to shut up. And you can by pushing for the union to take over scheduling. It'll shut them up. They won't be able to have nothing to do because we got in the contract that we make the decision. You don't. Sit your behind down and shut up. Go back in your little office. Shut up. As you can tell, I really, I really don't like the leadership of this company. And I'm going to be getting at it, getting at them anyway. Whether... TW put me on to help organize you guys during the day because I would love to do that. Just like I organized for the um, a, another union during the day and during the nights, I'm willing to make myself available to do the same thing for TW on behalf of this particular campaign because I want to see this campaign win and win big. I want to see your foot so far up these leaderships behind that they can smell polish. There's so much thing that I personally will put in the contract. And me, myself, I'm a videographer. Uh, let me see. See this? I want to get your stories. I want to know about your struggles at home. You got women with kids that's roommate. Now that's tough. I'm a single man. And it's tough. But you got two women with kids that got a roommate because... Where they work at, don't pay them enough money to pay the rent. I want to hear your stories. I want to be able to come out there and videotape your stories. <clears throat> See where you live at. Tell the story. Why? Because I want the public to know what you're going through. It ain't got nothing to do with GCS. Screw GCS. I need your stories. So you can tell the public of the struggle that you have to deal with with these contract companies. And this ain't a shot just out to GCS. There's too many freaking contract companies coming down here treating workers like trash. 
and the union need to step up their game, the politicians need to step up the game, and if I was mayor or if I was governor, and please don't ask me to do nothing like that. You treat the workers like trash in New York, my city, my people wrong, and you come from another state and you're going to treat them like trash? You ain't going to be here long. I don't care how much money you can save me. My number one priority is the people of New York City. That's why you guys need to be out there campaigning when they talk about the 10 PTO days. You need to be out there. Whenever TWU, Miss Lennon, them tell you to show up at the MTA board meeting, you need to take that time off. Don't call out sick like some people and gonna show up on the camera so they can fire you behind. <laughs> you know, take a um, just call out, take the L. You, I mean, look, this is something I'll be willing to get written up from. Now, I don't suggest you do that. If you got Wednesdays off, you go. I'm not telling nobody to call out to go to the MTA board meeting. But me, I would. See, if you had 10 PTO days, you can do that and they can hold that against you. That's why you need to be lobbying for the PTO days. Also, every MTA board meeting, if you got Wednesday off, you need to be there. If you have Wednesday off, you need to be there. Or if you work at night on Wednesdays and you can take the time out during the day to go, go. If you work from 4 to 11 or 3 to 12, I mean 3 to 10, go. And then go back to work. Anytime there's a rally, any kind of event, a march or whatever, go if you got the time. And don't, don't let, oh, I got children and all that be of a, uh, an excuse because you're doing this for them. So what you got to do, oftentimes we always let you, I keep saying we like I'm a part of TWU, we always give you information letting you know when the next rally is going to be, when the next march is going to be, when the next general meeting going to be, when the next disc is going to happen. We let you know in advance so you can prepare to have that time off. So what I'm basically saying is you guys got a fight going on. It starts this month. And if you want a powerful contract, it's going to take you and the majority applying the pressure on GCS, not some corporate people at TWU, even though they play a part. It's you. The strength of what's going to happen with that contract depend on what you do. You, the individual that's looking at me right now, you have your role to play. Either you will be with us or you're going to be with GCS. And look, personally, if I was there and I find out that you coming in between more vacation time for me and my family, more money, more food, because fighting for a contract is demanding for more. You coming against my more. And if you come against my more, you could say you my friend all you want. You not my friend. So you can say, girl, let's go to the club. Yo, Rob, let's go to the game. You were not the union fighting. You had the day off. We had a rally. You had a day off. We're trying to get this stuff done, and you had the day off to help us get it done, and you called me a friend. You're not my friend. You're not even a friend of yourself. And you got kids. It's a shame I'm out here fighting for your kids to have more, and you not out there. This is the kind of level of pressure that you got to put on, not just the GCS, but fellow coworkers who want to punk out, want you to do all their fights. My mama said, anybody, in time, you know, remind me of the picture of Homer Simpson going in the bushes. When it's time to fight, you pull back in the bushes. That's a coward. Cowards will never get what they want when they make a demand. Why? Because they always run. Y'all make it easy for GCS. A little fear will have you cowered out. You got to come with a lot of fear. I mean, look, I miss being there, tell you the truth. I love my job. I love what I did for GCS. Everything was perfect for me. I had my night shift. I did my business during the day. I had time to go for my vacation. I had it set. But because of GCS and some of their horrible rules, I became a victim of GCS's game to get rid of people within the next few years because that's their goal. They don't want to keep people long term because when they lose their contract, you can't go with them. So they don't care about keeping somebody alone. They're not invested in that. 
They too busy worrying about how long they gonna stay stay there. They care less about you. All right, so I'm almost done. I think I've been a little too long on this particular segment of this video. But there's a fight ahead. You guys got to get ready. And you guys got to mobilize, mobilize your workers on that job. I think it's important that you do a vote tally in TW Miss Lennon. They're going to do a tally of what are the most pressing needs of the workers there. And then they'll probably go into detail on each one of those needs. My suggestion is once you find out what everybody is in the agreement with, put it on a platform card and then have a platform sheet saying that you're willing to fight for this and put your name on it. Me personally, I would take a picture and put them, up what, put them on what most unions call a photo flyer. A photo flyer is basically said all these people are demanding a change. Yeah, you're going to set people up to get targeted. You're going to be targeted anyway. They're targeting you as we speak, even though you may not be a part of the union. The great thing about messing with a person, targeting a person that's union affiliated, it is against the law and it will hurt the company tremendously if they start targeting people for organizing. Because it is your right as American citizen to organize on the job and off the job. And to be fired of it is an unjust, it's a unjust firing, and it has repercussion. I mean, reper, it has repercussion to the person who fired you for doing work with the labor. We love those type of cases. We don't want people to get fired, but this is just another way to keep hitting them upside the head, and and keep shaming them. They're going to be in the press. There's there going to be all kind of campaigns going on, particularly with this. And we had, we tell people, show up and show out. Don't hide. Don't be no punk. <laughs> I'm scared. I need my, oh, God. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because at the end of the day, you cannot do anything. And they will still fire your butt. And you have no defense for your firing. At least the people who are mobilizing can say, they just did that because... I'm organizing against their behind. They targeted me. They did this wrongfully, and I'm taking them to court. I'm taking them to the NLRB, and we're going to spank that behind. And the more people that have that kind of attitude, they will back off. <clears throat> and I will be bold with my mouth. I wish somebody would talk about firing me uh, because I, I'm, 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 I'm rallying. It's my right as an American citizen to rally for labor. I wish somebody, I wish I find out somebody trying to harass me or fire me for something like that. Man, I'm going to have them in the labor court. No supervisor wants to do that. Management want to put the pressure on the supervisor, but most supervisors don't want that. And you got supervisors that have been pro-labor in the past, but the company is trying to put the pressure on them to pressure you. And you got to call it out like it is. For an example, your your fabulous, and I don't know how she still got a job after the stuff she did. Your fabulous operational manager on the seventh floor, do you know she was part of the first union contract when First Transit was there? Do you know she fought for hardworking, working people there? But now she's working for GCS. You know she is anti-union oh she'd be quick to fire you more than anybody she won't stand up against the company and say i don't think this right let's give this guy let's give this person a chance let's give this person a they you know uh, their baby was sick i can't do that i mean no because they scared for their job too and i get it i understand because you got to work <clears throat> but change isn't change until you decide to be the person to help with the change. Don't look to the person to the left of you. Don't look to the right to you. Unless you say to yourself, I'm making a change. What about you? What about you? Oh, you're not? You got to get away from me because right now, you saying that pisses me off. So if I do all the work and fight to get you changed and you participate and reap the results of it, is that fair for you? You think that's fair? 
that I risk my job so you can have more? Sometimes you're going to get, you have to get that way. Now, most people are not going to agree with my strategy and I'm not in charge. I'm not even on the team. These are just suggestions that I would do. I would do what TW normally do. They're going to poll the workforce, find out the most urgent needs of the workforce and build upon that. Whatever the urgent needs are, more vacation time, you know, uh, a grace period, um, uh, another grace period if you got to do with public transportation, um, the union taking over the scheduling department, this and that, put it on the platform where everybody can see it, have them sign for it, the union keep that copy so they can have on record the people who are going to be fighting on this campaign So, because we need that so we can communicate back with you and, and things like that. Uh, you saying that, that you're fighting for these things. At the same time, I will hand out cards to these people to hand out to fellow co-workers, you know, saying this is what we're fighting for and have them sign that card and hand it over to the union. These would be cards that you sign, you know, that way we know who's fighting. That way we know who are ready to go for it right away. And then we'll build from there and see who else can you bring in this fight. Okay, Johnny, I know you in this to win it, but uh, do your homework and see if you can get five other people to um, join the fight. Find out where they are. Are they on the, are they on the ah, too, too much of a punk to fight against the company or they're in the middle of a road where, you know, they lukewarm or are they hot like you? And then we'll know how to work with those people. These are the things about campaigning. Me personally, you got the people there um, working, that's rallying the people um, to come together, but there need to be, and I'm quite sure there will be, because it was the last time, people out there organizing during the day throughout the duration of the campaign. And I volunteer to do that. Well, I wouldn't volunteer. I got bills, man. I, I, I can't be sitting out there five to 10 hours a day. And I don't mind doing the five to 10 hours a day if you, if you got me. And let me tell you something. I'm good for it. Because I don't play. I don't take no games. I get in the company face. And I get in the worker face. And I'll, I'll, I'll put more demand on the worker than anybody. Anyway, I'm done. So this is your time time to shine, GCS, TWU at GCS. That is the name that I've dubbed you uh, from the last contract, TWU at GCS. You're not, just, you're not GCS. You're not GCS. GCS is your unionized company now. You're TWU at GCS. I know what they want you to think of them as you're part of their family. Well, if you're a part of their family, why you ain't making $20 minimum right now? If you're not part of their family, if you're part of the family, why your health care isn't paid 100% when they're, they have so much freaking money? We the one fighting for you. The labor movement in general is pushing this for you. I'm going to do whatever I can on my platform to talk about this, have your stories out there, let politicians know what's going on question them. They come to town. I'm going to be in their face asking them, what are you doing? You want people to vote for you? What are you doing to help them out? All right, Joe Biden, you taking money from um, these these um, union busting companies. If you want these people to vote, what are you going to do? Are you going to rally for them to get a new contract? Are you going to call out this company? Come on, Bernie, are you going to call out this company? Warren, you going to call out this company? I will. I will pr that's what we do. That's what you should do. Pressure these politicians to be on your side to help you win this fight. And again, before I go, <clears throat> show up for everything the union asks you to show up for if you got the time. Okay? You'll always know ahead of time so you can get your babysitting taken care of. And you always know ahead of time just in case you need to um, take a day off. You can take a day off to go there. Or if you work during the nights you can go during the day and pop up at night either way the more people that's out there rallying the more of a message you're going to get and i'm quite sure they're going to do some workforce demonstrations you need it scare the crap out of the company and let you know that y'all all are on one accord you all are on code 
Nobody is not getting off cold, and we ain't gonna let nobody get off cold. And if they, we sense they're getting off cold, we're gonna pull them to the side and check them. Y'all need to be on one accord, on cold, one mind, one band, one sound. That's how you're gonna be, defeat them. When they see y'all in one accord, one sound, one band, in unity, putting pressure on them, that's how the contract gonna get done. You cannot allow GCS fear campaign to punk you out. And the reason we didn't get what we really wanted to get is not because of the negotiation team, because I was there. It's because we really didn't have the rallying force to put the pressure on GCS like we should. We got a lot of new workers there, and a lot of them don't know the urgent need for labor fights on the job. They don't know the urgent need for workforce democracy. But you got to give them a history lesson. And let them know GCS will never give you what you deserve. If you want it, we got to come together and take a demand for it. And we got to do anything necessary, according to the law, to get it done. I'm ready to fight. Are you? All right, so this is Robert Brown with the Rob Report. This is going to be looking, um, I'll let you know about it, and hopefully they'll put it on the YouTube, um, face, um, Facebook group will be back up, uh, TW at GCS. There's going to be a couple rallies for this 10-day PTO. I invite people to go out there and show their support for it and rally for it. Um, come out with some signs, let, uh, talking about these contract companies like a dog. Because uh, what the contract companies want to do is they don't want to offer you vacation. Some contracts companies, such as GCS, they do give you vacation days. Okay? So I can't say everything is bad about GCS. You do get vacation days and you do get it progressive based on how long you stay on the job. The key is you got to work extra hard to stay on that job because they will fire you. I worked my way up to six weeks vacation, fired. Fired. I mean, not six week, three week vacation on year six, and they fired me, and I didn't get a chance to use none of it. And guess what, GCS? Don't you think I'm not suing you for it? I am. But a lot of these companies don't want to offer vacation. They tell you to take your vacation out of your sick time, your five days by law. And we're trying to separate that. Right now, they can allow you to do that. GC is not doing that to you, and we'll never let them do that to you. But right now, we're trying to fight to get PTO days and sick days separate. We also want to get vacation days separate from PTO days. And right now, the city is pushing 10 paid PTO days, personal days. Can you imagine how great that would be on top of five sick days, on top of vacation, and on top of the things that you may need the most, which we all rallied together, and that's the, um, the um, New York Leave and the National Leave Act. So it's important that not only do you organize on the job and take no prisoners, it's important that you organize off the job on this particular campaign, but it's also important that you organize off the job on your free time to push for certain laws that the city is trying to pass to enhance the labor movement. And it's also important that you look at your politicians and find out who has the strongest position on increasing the labor force, expanding the labor uh, rights of labor, the rights of workers on the job. In case in particular, there's one candidate, and I'm not gonna tell you who, he wants to put a law in that workers have to sit on their board. You can't have all corporate numb nuts on the board. You got to have some workers on that board to help you make the right decision. And there should be shared profit. When you're in record profit, when you're in a profit mode, there should be some kind of sharing that profit with your workers. That shouldn't all go in your freaking pocket and you continue to pay them minimum wage and try to, you know, minimize them for everything that they can get. Squeeze them for every... Anyway, I'm Robert Brown. I am the host of Union Power. Like, share, subscribe, and hey, if you want to donate to the channel, I'll put the information up. I I know most people work at GCS. I don't, you know that 
you need your money because they're not paying you enough. <laughs> uh, this is for people who do watch my show that's part of bigger labor movements, other labor movements, people who are working in the labor movement, people who are politicians. They, they come up to me and they tell me they appreciate the show and my fight and things like that. And then I can use it because I really want to dedicate myself to fighting for working people this way, through video stories or whatever. I want to do my part. And um, right now I don't have the budget for it. But I don't do this for money. I do this for victory, victory for you. And uh, let's go out there and get it. I'm with you. I'm going to be right there, right by your side. But you got to show yourself strong and let this company know that we're the giant. You're the pawns. And, and this time, if we gonna have, if I have to, I'm going to step on you and I'm going to crush you. Mark my word. I'm Robert Brown with Union Power. I'll let you later. Peace.